From a humble beginning as a shoe shine boy, later becoming an internet cafe owner, the first to bring broadband internet cafe in the Sekendita Kradi metropolis and by extension the western region, he's now a colossus in politics. And at the mention of his name, we all know what he's done and what he could do. Today, we want to know him better. So, this interview, which is coming to you live from Rebo International Hotel here in Takrade, will center on his life and growing up, politics, and Western region. He's none other person than Honorable Dr. Kobna Otre Dakumensa. And he's a member of parliament for Takrade constituency and the Western Regional Minister. On an extensive chat today, we are gracious enough to host the Regional Minister. Honorable, welcome. Thank you very much. So what? You started off as a shoe shine boy, but many people think it doesn't add up because knowing your background, a lot of people think, where did it fit in? How did you start off as a shoe shine boy? Uh, basically, I, I think that um, a lot of people came to know me when I got into, became a, pol a politician and then as MP. But I've done politics more than 14 years before I became an MP. How? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I was born in Takrati. Um, my father is an old, old sickle student. Uh, my mother is a teacher who became an entrepreneur. My grandmother was a maid at the age of seven. And she built herself up as a single mother, taking care of 11 children and still succeeded. Uh, we grew up at Amanfo. Um, Takradi Amanfo, and everybody knows what Amanfo means. Um, I was trained as a boxer. Boxer? By, yes, by Konkrani. Yes, so go Mango um, Gym, that's where we used to train when we were kids, and we used to have a lot of boxing competition. So, what you wanted to grow up to become a boxer, a professional, like oh, someone else? Oh, it was part of the hobbies that uh, we all enjoyed and okay. uh, uh, work at it. When I was in primary school, I used to do a lot of shoe Which primary school? In fact, I started at Bedu, uh, Beduado, okay. which used to be called Accra Road, which is now Beduado, opposite the central uh, police station. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we came to Services Primary. And whilst we are Services Primary, we were working from Timaba, I mean Amanfo, all the way to Services Primary, which is good every day. Okay, and we did that. So doing that and then doing your shoe shine for me wasn't a big headache. So at what age were you the shoe shine? Uh, I think around 8, 9, and 10. So you started making money at that age? Yes, I started making my own money at that age. And your parents weren't concerned? Not at all. Because um, what I did was that um, during the school days, what I do when I come back home, I go around to all the big boys in the evening, around 5, 6, and take their shoes. So in the morning when I finish my high chores, I quickly polish them and then give it to them. So how then, much were you earning? Oh, I can't remember, but I think it was a lot of money because uh, uh, we also did that on Saturdays and Sundays from Takrade. We passed through the market circle all the way to the railway station at the Harbour Gate. Um, I think I was making some money because we were able to use it to build what I called the, my, my football team called the City Boys. And some of the players that we bought from you the bought other yes, yeah, but we bought a lot of players and we sold a lot of players. Some of the players that we bought, and one that comes off head is Nana Boysen. Mm -hmm. Nana Boysen has this long stretch of shops opposite the Anagi Trace Mart. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think currently he's building some toilets even the Amanfo community just behind the Robert Mesa building. These are some of my players. And some of the teams that we used to play with was Go Mango. So if we ask Solomon Cancer, we used to score them a lot. And we were in that team. <laughs> They've been scoring him since. Oh, yes. In politics yeah. and in football. <laughs> so because we all grew up in the same neighborhood, you know, we respect ourselves. Um, so that's where I started. And then along the line, I think when I was even in class five, class six, I used to sell ice blocks and ice water. In fact, I made so much money that my uncle, Dr. Kojo Fajiman, who, used to, who was in charge of the SDA clinic, told my mother he would allow me to sell again because he was imagined that with time I might ignore school and concentrate on trade and he felt that it might be detrimental to my own development. So that's how far we did it. So the entrepreneurial spirit started as early as eight? Yes. yes. And how did, they, how did they start? Was it your parental background? Your I, I think so. I think so. I, I think so. Because even my shoe shine box, was given to me by my grandmother. Oh, okay. Yes. So she was in support. She has always been in support. And my grandmother, when you come back from school, you either get some soap to sell or some toffee to sell or something. I mean, she always encouraged us to do that because she's a market woman. And naturally, if 
that's the skills she had. I mean, it's necessary that she impact those skills uh, to her children and grandchildren. And I'm lucky. I was the my grandmother's last baby. You know, I stayed with her till I grew up. So um, we had that good experience with, with, with her. So from services, and then to infant swim. What did you One study? Two I studied biology. Biology. So and you're then I did, yes, pure science student. In fact, I was supposed to do maths, and I said I won't do maths. I wanted to do biology because my uncle had then gone to Holland and was in medical school. So the plan was that he wanted me to join him in medical school. But a few things happened when I when I was getting to uh, university. Uh, I think before I got into university, I'd gotten into politics a little bit. Um, I was appointed the regional um, elections resource coordinator, which we today will call the research and elections officer in our party. And I traveled the length and breadth of the Western region with the likes of Mr. Kriku, Mr. Makmenu, Mr. Jassa, Mr. Takwa, uh, Uncle Papa, uh, Mr. Kujakwa, a few others, Mr. Febu. I, I, I worked with a lot of the colossals in, in the region uh, on the political side. So before I got into tech, I was already into politics. So when I got into tech, too, I wasn't lazy about my politics. I got seriously involved. Uh, my roommate stood for the SRC election. He had a campaign manager, and the campaign manager absconded to London. So one day, there was a major debate in our hall, Republic Hall. And I needed to support my friend, who was my roommate. He's called Judge Biney. He's in CPP. They call him Yahoo Cream. Yeah. So that day, I had to mobilize the whole stretch of our floor in support of our, <laughs> our so-called candidate. I mean, he had not discussed anything <laughs> with anybody. But I felt that we were too proud that for our line, who calls sight on Republic Hall, we didn't want to get defeated. So we mobilized all the young men there, and then we went to support George. So immediately we finished. George called me and said, Kobe, now you're my campaign manager. Wow. <laughs> and then we started doing the campaign. We didn't win, though, but I think that we got some quite substantial vote, because it was the last minute thing. And then from there, I took up the challenge of working on the vice chairmanship of our hall, which we won with Star. And then the last year, um, I also worked with uh, Kisi. I was his campaign manager, and we won the SRC elections. Wow. Um, I also competed in my own department, biochemistry, and I won. And I became the president of the Biochemical Society of Ghana, both Tech, uh, Tech, Legon, and UCC. Wow. Yeah, so, so we've been doing the politics. So uh, what were you telling them then? Was it this, was it crude politics or you were very much it's into... not good politics i mean politics is all about uh, trust one nobody will vote for you if they can't control you and nobody will vote for you they don't trust you mm. and it's all about your deeds what you do i mean whatever you are doing people are looking at you you might think that nobody's looking people are, people are really looking so when people want to give you their vet, uh, their vote it's because you've done it before and they know you can deliver when they give you another opportunity so i believe that that's all about politics politics is not about lies I believe that politics change lives, and that's so many things, and and that is where I believe that's the politics I do, and I can't, I'll continue to do so. But a lot of people think you are you are from a privileged background because your family are known to be hoteliers. We can mention about five top hotels in Western region where. Yes, was 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 I agree that my background looks good. We work hard for it. We don't sleep. My family, nobody sleeps. We work hard for it. So it's not privilege. It's hard work. Anybody who works hard with something little can grow it into something big. I mean, when I was doing my shinsha, it was very something small. And I, got, I put that money into football. That made me money. My grandmother was a corn mill operator. She decided that she wouldn't spend all her money on all the unnecessary things in life, but to invest the money as a rent into somebody's building and use that to run a hotel that became successful. It's all hard work. So the first hotel is an immense? Not an immense. Africana Hotel. Africana Hotel. That's the old Golden Queen's Hotel that has closed down. Okay. Next to the Guelph Station. Wow. Yeah. That's the um, Africana Hotel. Wow. So it's Af out of Africana Hotel. Then we had a Infi nightclub. Okay. But when we were moving from Africana Hotel, the nightclub went earlier. So before the Africana Hotel got to that location, I Infi became so popular that they had to change the hotel name from Africana Hotel to Ahimfei Hotel. Oh, okay. So that's the genesis of this wow. whole thing. Yes. So the Ahimfei itself was just a nightclub inside Africana Hotel. Oh, okay. And because it was lighter to move them earlier before the main hotel moves, because they had been evicted from their old location, um, that place became very popular. What's your fondest memory when you're growing up in Takradi? Well, I think that I still enjoy it today. So the, the, the anchors, mm -hmm. 
the fancy dress. So you've been well. part since? Yes, I've been part. I've been part, I think, by the age of five. Um, we used to have Miss Aite. My younger, my elder brother was seven, my cousin was six, and I was five. And the three of us were being picked every day from the house by Ankara Aite to go for all these rounds in the fancy dress. And our house has always welcomed fancy dress. I mean, my grandmother, Christmas, is one of the busiest times in our house. I mean, we cook from morning to the evening because this fancy dress group will come. They come and take their rice, their sugar, their drinks, their money. They go, another group will come. So they get like 15 groups passing through the house and we're at Amafo, you know, yeah. we're, we're just um, three buildings from the um, Robert Mensah building, mm -hmm. I mean the old SD, the new SDA clinic, we're just four buildings from there. Oh, okay. So that's the center of Amafo, so whoever was passing through knew that as for our house. So is it where Spice FM, Old Spice FM was? Old, no, not, not Old Spice FM, three buildings down, next okay. to Ambassador Hecat. Oh, okay. that's our family house. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's our family. That's the family house that my grandfather built. So at what point did you start the eBase internet company? Oh, I think eBase started around 2000, 2001. Uh, that's when it started, uh, after investing. And it was big because uh, I'd taken broadband internet mm -hmm. to tech. So mm -hmm. I, I asked myself, what is the point of bringing that into Kumasi when I'm coming home? I need to bring it back home. To, so I brought the broadband to, because tech was using a dial-up. Not, not the broadband that you use now is on our phones mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I took it to Tech and we did what we call the Internet Showdown. In fact, uh, in my final year, I was the director for trade and technology for the University of Science and Technology. And for the first time, we advertised it on national television. Wow. And it was very, very big. Okay? So be proud to the Tratech. We did the Internet Showdown to introduce the whole KNUSC co university community to broadband internet and we taught people how to use the internet so it's the same concept that i decided that hey, if we've been able to do it in kumasi why can't i bring it to 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 Takradi? because i was the team lead so i brought it to Takradi, and and then we started ebase yeah, it wasn't difficult setting it up not at all because because you had finished um, I, I i i one first and foremost when i was even at infants film i got i was a member and then the treasurer for the computer society so I understood computers. I knew how to program and stuff. When I was in university, I was still learning how to program from Mars computers, from Dang, and the rest. So I knew a little bit of computer, and then I had a, a, a class of people around me who were serious computer programmers, like Amara Chuku and Tete. I mean, these are guys who understood technology. So when I was bringing it to Takra, this wasn't uh, a big, a big but problem. You knew you wanted to do politics all this well, or it just, you just happened to be on the scene? Oh, not at all. I, I, I think that it was, it's through the socialization. Uh, my family have been very active politically, even though not in the, in the open space, but on the background. And my household has always been known to be politically active. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, because we've been actively contributing to the party and speaking our That's minds. NDP. Yes, and speaking our minds to, to, to political leadership that comes into town. Um, because for us, our philosophy about private business and private investment has always been supported by the philosophy of the MPP party of a property owning democracy, which hangs on three pillars of uh, freedom of enterprises, freedom of association and freedom of religion, and then the issue of investing in health mm -hmm. and then education. You know, my father used to talk about health a lot, even before I started understanding the concepts uh, being put together because my father was also a campaign manager for uh, Honorable Kujun Pionim, President who was yeah. chief of staff. Chief of staff yeah. Yes, he was the campaign manager. Oh, okay. So, as for the politics, I've, I've seen him go around <laughs> in the house uh, for some time. Yes, so, and then when I did my national service, I had the opportunity of doing it with uh, Mr. Peter McMahon. So, so you did it in the MPP party? Or? No, 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 no. With Mr. Peter Mark Menu. He gave me my first job. Oh, okay. Yes, after school. So I believe a part of the socialization also came from that. He's my political mentor, you know that. Still? So, yes, why not? I mean, the president is my boss. Mm -hmm. But the person that brought him into politics yeah. is, is Mr. Peter Mark Menu. Wow. So in 2009, January, you entered parliament. Yes. We, just, um, we were listening to the radio when we had a young person who has been able to take over the seat from a, a big wig like Mrs. Gladys yeah. Asma. 
And you were, how old were you then? I think 32 or 33. Yeah, 32. And you entered parliament at that age, and we had, everybody was, we were in awe to know that you are, you are, you are very young and entered parliament. How was that trick? I, I, I think that I paid my dues. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when we won power in 2001, I was appointed as the finance committee chairman of the assembly after being appointed by President Kufo into the assembly. And I had gone there with all my private sector ideas, with my computer ideas, that we could do things differently from what we were doing. And I was in charge of revenue mobilization as a finance committee chairman. And over the six years that I was there, we had increased revenue by a thousand percent and number mm -hmm. one in Ghana. Yes, wow. our IGF, yes. That's what we were able to do. In fact, our IGF was the same as the amount of money that was coming from Accra. Wow. Uh, and I'd worked with people like uh, Mr. Edwin Phillips, mm -hmm. uh, Christine Krumah, who gave me space to, to do the things that I discussed with them. You know, I mean, Mr. Edwin Phillips will tell you, Kobe, mm -hmm. We want to surpass the national revenue in come here because we don't want to be controlled. <laughs> you know, and he was then the president of the Anglican Church. So he understood some of these decentralization issues and stuff like that. So they gave me the targets and then I decided to work at them. And they, they, they were good, we were, were successful. So with all these politics, when I was coming for the primaries in 2017, uh, I was cl quite clear in my mind. 2007? 2008. April 2000, we did our primaries. Yes. Uh, so who were you contesting with then? Oh, I was contesting with uh, older people. Mm -hmm. uh, Jane Ednanyami, mm -hmm. Shichi Sowa, mm -hmm. uh, Amwati, mm -hmm. and especially assistant to Mrs. Asma, wow. David uh, Okala. Eh? I was the youngest. But you know, politics, like I always tell you, is about trust. Mm -hmm. It's how you deal with people. It's, it's about relationship. I mean, you can't just get up one day and just say that you have appeared. It doesn't have contest primaries then and elections as compared to now because now the conversation is a lot of money goes into um, campaigning from primaries and this has been in the traditional media. I, I, I know that when journalists start asking these questions, the next question is how much did you spend? If you, if, if but, you but care you to see, share, we but you see. Know. That's not the most important thing. Mm -hmm. I think that we have to ask the reverse. Mm -hmm. How is that we have built a society that mm -hmm. people are always asking? Yeah. That's the question I think should be asked. And I think that's where we have to start our conversation from. Mm -hmm. So that we can all be clear. Together. Was it expensive to run elections then? It has always been expensive to run elections every time. Mm -hmm. Every way. It's just that when you take about inflation, inflation will then add up the figures. But I believe that there's always they have they have always been expensive. Elections have always been expensive. So do you have finances then when you're coming in 2008? Um, I had always had friends and, and they have always come to my aid. And most of them I don't even ask. Okay. I mean, I'm, I, 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 maybe I'm lucky because uh, I believe that politics is for service. And when you serve people well, when it gets to your time, they'll come to your aid. I mean, they'll just naturally come. You don't have to bother them. To come and say, oh no, I want to buy your forms. I want to do this, and, and it, it makes it makes it very interesting. Yes, if you are genuine with people, people will also be genuine with you when it gets to your hard times. So you're very sure you are going to contest for the Takradi constituency? No, no other constituency. No, in fact, originally, I'd always thought Mr. Asma was going to run again, so it was not part of my my, plans. my plans. So when Mr. Asma announced to his executives mm -hmm. in 2007 that he was not going to. Time. I mean, I was like, okay. But even that one, I was not even pushing. So, I quite remember in 2004, um, I organized a regional rally at PWD. Yes, I was, I was the chairman, wow. yes. And I worked with people like Mr. Febu, Kofi Kwanza, a few other people. And that day, I was looking for my youth organizers to give them um, money to buy food into their cars and use their cars to do the announcements in town for me. So I went to Kesimintin, Sekendi, all this place. So when I got to Takradi, I think at a, upon Chinkakra, yeah. then I met uh, Mr. Ibrahim Sana. Mm -hmm. So when I met him and I gave him his money that he should do the rounds for me, mm -hmm. I was leaving. Then he called me back and he said, Ah, Kobe, why don't you 
when Mrs. Asma is going, we want you to come and contest the Sakadi seat. I think around 2005, I was going to school. I was in my master's, so I was going to school. So some boys also from the constituency also came and said, oh, honorable, we want you to. A lot of us understand my so they knew me and because I was representing Takradi. And I did a lot of training for them throughout the region. So, mm -hmm. so they also came to me and said, oh, why don't you come and contest? So I told them that, oh, I'm going to school. They should let me finish. <laughs> they should finish and let me come back. And when I come, I will look at. But even that, I still put a caveat that if Mr. Asma decided to have a U10 and it was not run after 2007 and decided to run, we are still not going to run. Because, you see, when we're at the regional level, our concept has always been that keep what you have and add on to it. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we are not the type of people that were going after certain MPs and creating difficulties for them. We, we, we believe that you keep what you have and look for our constituencies. So that, was, that has always been my concept. So when Mr. Sir then decided not to run, then it had opened the gates for everybody to put in his best foot forward. So basically that's what I did. Well, so since 2009, you entered parliament. And in Parliament, you've made a mark. Um, you've served on the subsidiary legislation, education, and business committees. How, what's the magic? What do you do? Oh, I think that uh, one of the beautiful committees I enjoy sitting on is the subsidiary legislation because it gives you the opportunity to interact with every ministry in this country. Because every ministry comes there to do their sub-legislation. I mean, after you've passed an act of Parliament, mm -hmm and they want to actually break down and operationalize the act. That's the law you do. So basically, you're looking at virtually every law that mm -hmm. is in all the ministries okay. and how they are implemented. So it's one of the committees that I enjoy sitting on. And currently, I'm the oldest member of that committee. Wow. <laughs> From 2009, I have not left that committee. You're still on? <laughs> yes, I'm still on that committee. So it's one of the most interesting committees that I have. Um, then we have the uh, um, education committee. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why I want to sit on the education committee. You know, in 2003, when we were at the assembly, mm -hmm. we celebrated our centenary. So I'd gone to Uncle Mark to go and inform me that we're going to celebrate mm -hmm. the centenary. Yeah. So the first question they asked me was that, what is the objective? After you have done your, all your parties, mm -hmm. what do you want to put there as a mark? And I said, well, we want to set up a university. But you know, setting up a university was very difficult. So when I got into parliament, I decided that I have to sit on the committee that can give us the university in Takari. So I, I lobbied to be on the education, education committee. Oh, so it was an agenda? Yes, I had an agenda. So the first one was I was looking for the open university to set up. Unfortunately, we had lost power, you know. Yeah. And then President Kufa talked about the open university in 2008. Eight, yeah. So when we lost power, so I went to Professor Toby mm -hmm. that what was the plans and stuff, 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 stuff. Then after. I sat in the committee and after all the distance discussion, I realized that, I mean, the discussion or the agenda had faded, you know. Until recently, that Napo announced that he's bringing back this. So, so just imagine, over 12 years, mm -hmm. they are now bringing up this discussion. So I was going to look for that, the headquarters of that university to come to. That right. So I even proposed the railway training school mm -hmm. behind ECG. Mm -hmm. I sent all my documents. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Because the discussion didn't go far, because the Ministry of Education itself had changed direction. Uh, they are reprioritized. So I needed to look for another opportunity to bring a university to Takadi. And which university? Yes, and the, that was the GTUC, GTUC campus that we brought to Takadi. So it's your baby project? Yes, please. That's my wow. whole baby project. Yes, that's correct. In fact, originally I had wanted Ashashi University. So I'd gone to see Patrick Ewa at uh, Cantonment or so. I was in his judo attire and said, Kobe, you really want to come, but I'm picking an IFC facility mm -hmm. to build my own campus. So not until I build my own campus, mm -hmm. it will be difficult for me to set up a campus. So I started talking and then I had a friend called Mr. Bimpa. He's late now. He came to do the, the street names in town. And he said, oh, he has one of his classmates from Chicago who was running the Ghana Technology university and therefore we should go speak to him so there was a program at the national identification authority and he had also invited the gentleman so he told me when i'm coming to takradi he let me meet the man so we all met at the national uh, identification authority and he introduced me to him so i told them that oh look 
why don't you come set up a university here? Because it's something that we need. What we have is a polytechnic. We want a university. It's accredited. And when I spoke to the president, he said he would consider it. So about two or three months, he called me that I wanted to visit Takrade and see what they can do. So when he visited, we went to a few companies, Gapoa, Railway, all the companies that were in Takrade. Mm -hmm. So we agreed that we we're going to start with executive programs, maybe certificate programs, small human resource, small finance programs, small ICT stuff. Mm -hmm. So we needed a venue. So because it was an executive program, we decided, okay, then we will announce our presence in Takrade and start it at Rebo Conference Room. Just about that they finished just up. Here. Yeah, just here. I mean, at that time they had the conference here mm -hmm. and then the big one. So just about the time that we were preparing to start, then a Vodafone gave an offer that we have left their building at the PNT. Mm -hmm. So we should go have a look if we are comfortable. But when we went to look, we were game. And we decided to start uh, breaking them down. In fact, even before our cry instructed us, I'd called Mr. Finn to start breaking, <laughs> breaking up the places so that we can, we can work on them. So and that's what we did. Uh, I believe that that's what my, my mother and my grandmother taught us to do. These are the things they taught us. My grandmother works very hard. I mean, if she was alive, I believe that by the time we would have gotten her, we would have passed through here to check out whether everything was in order. Mm -hmm. That's how we work in our house. But looking at the data of elections in Takradi, constituency, it seems you, are, you, are, you don't have any competition. I agree, but, but um, like somebody said, if they give you a job to sweep, mm -hmm. you sweep so well that everybody knows you are the best. You don't wait for people before you take a decision. Um, I've always believed that you don't wait for competition before you start working. Because if you wait for the competition, you'll be too late. You should always try to be ahead of your own game. Because if you wait, other people will come and surpass you so quickly. So uh, that's the way I work. But I, I don't wait for I, people. I just also think you are too relaxed because of that. Because I've there's this notion that, that mm -hmm. even in the Takradi constituency, even if you um, decorate a goat, they go to win on the state of NPP. Are Takradi people good to no. be voting for No, it's, it's just um, an axiom. It's just it's, a it's not. Meaning NPP is too comfortable there. It's, we, are, we, we, have never, we have not been relaxed in this constituency. Mm -hmm. If you look at the kind of work and the projects we are doing, I mean, you are working as if you are in opposition. Mm -hmm. if, if, if we are relaxed, we wouldn't mind the, the, the needs of the communities. But every need that the community tell us, work at it. We always run around getting, getting things fixed for, for our communities. If we relax, we stopped. We would have stopped this long ago. Again, even today as I'm speaking, mm -hmm. even today as I'm speaking, we are starting new construction. Yeah. Is it because we are relaxed? No. Okay, so another school of thought is saying that because the 2020 primaries brought about some shock, it has really sat you people down, especially the um, incumbent MPs that we saw big wigs falling and all that. So it's just a wake up call, an alarm to people like you. I don't think so. The people lost. There were, there were a lot of them were new new MPs. <laughs> that were new, more, more than sixty percent were new MPs. Mm -hmm. But big wigs also fell. How many? Give me the names. How many compared to the new MPs? There are only a few. Mm -hmm. So the, so that's what I'm telling you. You don't have to wait for competition to catch up with you before start doing anything. So I, I don't wait. Mm -hmm. Me, I don't wait. Even on election day, you see that we are starting a new project, even when I know I'm going to win. It's because when you get the opportunity to serve, even if it comes last minute, you have to serve. That's my principle. And that's how I've always worked. I mean, when I used to run eBay's, my grandmother used to visit me a lot. Once in a while, when she's coming from the market, she'll pass there and check whether everything is there. And every time she comes there, she realizes that I've changed the place. It's looking nice. Today, your tower is done well. Today, your painting is good. Then she tell me, ah, I've not seen you paint the outside because it's better to paint the outside before the people, you know. And I was doing those things because, you see, it's a service. Mm -hmm. It's like this hotel, this room. If you're a customer of this hotel and this is the room you like, at least every six months, they should change the room for you to see that you have, you have seen something new. Otherwise, the place will be dull and boring. Mm -hmm. That's my attitude. That has always been my attitude to work. That you have to excite your your customer Customers. we have been in the service industry and we know how it is mm -hmm. so that's the way i look at things when i'm doing my politics as well that you have to excite your your your, your people all the time and you can only excite your people when the things they ask for mm -hmm. are delivered 
So in the Takwadi constituency, which area in the constituency would you say you've left a legacy project that if you go to, say, Airport Ridge, if you go to a man for, I mean, New Takwadi or Takwadi, you can see footprints of yours there? Oh, as for footprints, we have a lot of it. Um, if you come to New Takwadi, we have the nurses and daughters flats. Uh, we also have the sister bed ward that we are currently finishing mm -hmm. for New Takradi. Mm -hmm. If you come to number one, we've paved the whole place. I mean, and that has changed the place. And I hear even landlords are now increasing their rent. Um, if you come to Amanfo, the first paved road in Takradi constituency is in Amanfo, open space. It's a road, it's not a dead background. <laughs> It's a road that I built. Okay, we are currently doing additional works opposite the Go Mango Boxing Gym. Um, if you come to Odadra, behind Daviyama, mm -hmm. that's where we built the city campus for the Islamic Secondary School. Uh, if you come to Collins Avenue around the same area, we built a new JHS for them, which they didn't have for over the 35 years that the primary school um, was built. If you go to Adakopi currently, we are doing the first engineered road in Adakopi, and we are going to put the first quota in Adakopi before the, before the year ends. If you take um, um, where, where again? There are too many. There are too many. I, I just want to see where. Uh, if you go to Sawmill, mm -hmm. I mean the first uh, two-story Built by an MP in the Western region was built by myself. And we are currently doing the AstroTef, and we are also doing another AstroTef also at uh, number one. If you come to New Takradi again, we are building the biggest youth center in the Western region that will Ultramodin. have yeah, Ultramodin, that will have bank, swimming pool. Uh, New Takradi? Oh, yes. So, when are we looking forward to seeing that? Oh, I, I believe that we'll finish with the first floor by the end of the year and then me I'll finish and go up and get it used and then we'll go up and then we'll get it used and we'll go up. That's how I'll be doing. That's that's my plan for, 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 for it. And in two thousand and seventeen you appointed the Deputy Minister of Aviation. Yes please. Before coming home as the Western Regional Minister. What at aviation interested well, I, I think that aviation one of the things that interested me was putting aviation and tourism together. Okay. So we did the charter charter policy. Um, to encourage more charter service into because you know our tarmac was only about 45 percent usage so we needed to put in some new measures and we're also able to start the kumasi airport expansion and terminal and um, the tamale airport expansion and terminal uh, and then we also selected takrali to be given a new proper befitted international airport at kgb, KGB right? yes so what's happening to it um We've done a lot of work on it. Uh, ministry is now taking a decision whether to do PPP mm -hmm. or to do debt to service the project. So that's, that's the crossroads we are, we are now. We've gotten a lot of proposals on both PPP and then debt. So these are the proposals we are So doing. it will come off? Yes, it's come off. It's on. It's not that it will come off. The ministry is just taking a decision to inform cabinet that this is the route we want to take to do it. So if you just joined us as extensive chat and we are still talking to Honorable Governor Oche Daku Mensa and he is the Western Regional Minister and Member of Parliament for Takwadi Constituency. We've asked him about his life and growing up. We've done politics. We want to come home to Western Region where he is the Regional Minister. So in 2019 when the Western Region was divided, he was brought home as the Western Regional Minister. And now he's, he's still the Western Regional Minister, substantive Western Regional Minister. When you moved from aviation to Western Region, you, were you happy? Was it something you considered or reconsidered? No, I didn't. Uh, it's not something I thought that. It was an opportunity I, built, I believe that was worth giving it a shot. Um, and therefore, when the president asked me, I said, yes, I'll come and do the work. You said you come and do the work. Yeah. And so I've had the opportunity to be at the office several times. And it's more than a hospital or a police station. People queue up all the time. And this comes to mind about the dependency 
and the why we we've built a system of people acting always. Why is that so? Um, me, I believe that this morning I wanted you to come to the house before we met here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the place is full. If you go to the office, the place is full. That's the country. But so what? I, why, I, why I, I believe for? that uh, it's our system, it's our communal way of living mm -hmm. as a people. Mm -hmm. You know, in this country, the business opinions mm -hmm. solves all these problems. Mm -hmm. So when you become a leader in your community as an MP or a minister, you, are still, you become the bigger opinion. Okay. So everybody will bring his normal problem that is small opinion in his family has can solve to the top. That's why I see it. Mm -hmm. And therefore I don't it's get worried. Rotation. Yes. So I don't get worried about it. Because I've done this for over eight years before I became a minister. And therefore it's normal. I remember people were asking me why are you going back home to mm -hmm. become a leader? Why don't you stay? In Accra. And I said, I've done this for eight years. What more have not I seen? So if it's about serving my people, I'll come back home. In fact, one day before the announcement came, my brother's uh, pastor had insisted he wanted to see me. So I was not getting time to go. I, was, I kept going back and forth. So one day I was just going to Accra. And my brother just chanced on getting me on the line. So when he called, I said, oh, I'm just leaving for Accra. I said, oh, but you are, if you are passing through Ifia, my office is there. He wants to meet you in the sh church. So pass by and before you go to a class, I pass by. So when I got there, he told me, Kobe, before March ending, the president will announce that they've given you a new post. And this post they are going to give you, to give you the opportunity to help your people. In fact, I became elated. So if I can get posts I can use to help my people, then what, it, what are we in politics for? So when president called me, I announced the thing. I mean, I was game. So I decided to come home and do the work. And I believe that so far it's been very worthwhile. Worthwhile because you see, sometimes politics people take it for granted. There are some people who pass very bad and useless comments about mm -hmm. politics and politicians. But the same people are the people who look up to government when there's a crisis. Maybe you know, they say at year MRA free. Maybe when they are not in need, they think that anybody who is in need is crazy. It's like sometimes people sizing people up for going to church in the morning or in the afternoon. Everybody has this problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you see somebody going to church in the morning, you know why he's going. It's not Sunday. He's going to, for, you know, everybody has his reason for doing something that we do. So for me, I see it as the larger Ibushin opinion concept. And therefore, I don't fret. So you enjoy it. You don't have family issues where the wife will be concerned where people your family members come in oh, they know every I mean, day they know i'm in politics so if you, you get concerned about it then you are behaving as if you don't know i'm in politics but which of your children wants to enter politics any of them oh of course i want to do law um they all enjoy it i mean when we go for rallies they join me when we go for <laughs> kifri they join they join us how many of them there are three of them and they're all girls and they enjoy and, they're all girls. and they all enjoy enjoy doing it Wow. Yeah, so and you don't have any problem problem that, if any no. of them wants to enter politics. I don't, knowing have, that I don't, I don't have a problem at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody is, is built for a purpose. So if they are built for that purpose and they want to do it. Uh, yeah, so I asked about the family and the number of children because I would want to know would, how, would, how old are they anyway? Okay, she is 21, uh -huh. the other one is eight, 17. Mm -hmm. Uh, 18 and then the last one is 13. Okay, so would you want them to live in Thai, not travel anywhere? They are up for marriage and their husbands are confused as to where to stay. Uh, would you want them to live in Western region? I mean, the husbands would take those decisions with them. No, so they it, are it's confused. Not, it's not, it's let's, not, it's let's not up to me. Let's consult that, that they are confused. We want nah, to consult. If I say something right now, somebody is you say your father <laughs> said he wants to give us our marriage. I don't no, want that. No, um, on that on that note, I want to know if the Western region we are building together with you and everybody's quota would be a place worth living in the next definitely 20. because that, that, that is my plan mm -hmm. you know i'm not an accra type of person yes i'm somebody that even when i'm in parliament it gets to friday i'm in a hurry to come back home i do it all the time in fact when i sleep in accra and i get up I get worried. It's like, hey, who came to do for me in the house that I'm not there? Mm -hmm. What are the issues that, you know? I've always believed in the Western Region project. 
And I believe that ever since I became an MP, I've been consistent. Mm -hmm. I mean, the motion for the 10%, that was even promised no, by are. the NDC. Yes, I moved it in Parliament. Okay. And then NDC people like Kofi Boy, they ran away from the motion. The motion to bring the GMPC headquarters to Western Region, I moved it in Parliament. The motion to move the Petroleum Commission headquarters to Western Region, I moved it in Parliament. Because I've always believed in the Western Region agenda. Honorable, we have operational headquarters, not the headquarters. What's the yes. difference? The, 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 the difference is that, with the exception of the corporate staff, all other things will be done here. So the corporate will be in Accra? Yes. And the technical, the, technical part, part will, be. will be here. Because, you see, our concept of this project was to make the Western Region the back office for the oil and gas industry in the mm -hmm. whole of West Africa. Mm -hmm. That is why we are pitching to become an alternative financial services hub for investment in Western Region. And that is why when God, President gave us the opportunity to choose prior, three priority roles, I chose the roles that will make sure that the farthest point from this region, regional capital, should be two and a half hours from Samraboy mm -hmm. to Takrade. That's our plan. Mm -hmm. you, understand? you have to let things fit into the plan that you have so that you can service your people better. Because if your people are far away from you, you use the other centers of metropolises. And therefore, it's very important that we do a project that brings Western Region closer all the time so we can interact more as a people. So with the PTC interchange, yes, we've not seen any work there. You the know, Vice President came to Takrade. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. You know, you know, the engineers, they have a camera that they shoot photos, mm -hmm. but they don't print. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that camera before? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they started yeah. doing that work. Right now. <laughs> yes, so they're working, yes. We're also expecting the billboard to come down this week. So they can start some work on the pile and, and, and other stuff. So we are working. They, they, they are not going to sleep on the matter. In fact, we are hoping that next week, 27th going, we should be able to also cut the sword for the double road or dual carriage yeah. from Takrade to Sekendi. We'll cut the sword from Sekendi and bring it to Takrade. Hmm. <laughs> um, this is the oil region. Yeah. And the oil capital is Sekendi Takrade. But should I bring a foreigner here? Will I, will I be and ask the person, does this reflect an oil city or an oil region? Um, I, I don't think the person would it agree. It took some government mm -hmm. to do nothing. So free education came for people to actually enjoy oil money. Western region, we have increased our enrollment from 13,000 to 27,000 simply because we have introduced a good government has introduced free secondary education. It's a good wow. government. Yes. We are using oil money oh, yeah, to pay money. for free education. In Western Region, we have all the gold and timber and cocoa. We were not taking our children to school. It's 13,000. Now the number has increased to 27,000. It shows that we have always had a desire to go to school. But because we don't own the productive assets. You see, we are journalists. How many of your guys have decided to put their hard-earned money to buy cameras and have form a crew? Because some people who don't believe in owning yeah. the productive asset. Yes, but honorable, to be frank, it's very expensive too. And I don't think the support base here really support that as well. Because these cameras, this crew we are working with, this camera, there is not less than 2,000 cities. So you need about see, two of them. You see, and that's why every solid you get, you keep, you don't chop. <laughs> so that when you get the 2,000, you buy a camera. And but what do you buy for? You see, yes. this concept, like you have said, mm -hmm. people always asking, asking, yes, asking. Yes. It's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. So when you end one CD, you put 50% down before you chop the other 50. You don't chop 50 when mm -hmm. you are satisfied, then you keep 50. You keep the 50 before you chop. So you, you don't eat beyond your cloth. Mm -hmm. Or you don't uh, cut your coat according to your cloth, mm -hmm. not according to your, your size. Mm -hmm. The fact that you are a big boy doesn't mean that every day you have to sit, sit in a big car and, and spend petrol. It means that once in a while you have to intentionally drive motorcycle. Or bicycle.
this is the oil region yeah and the oil capital is second credit but should i bring a foreigner here will i will i be and ask the person does this reflect an oil city or an oil region um, I, I don't think the person would it agree it took some government mm -hmm. to do nothing so free education came for people to actually enjoy oil money western region we have increased our enrollment from 13,000 to 27,000 simply because we have introduced a good government has introduced free secondary education. It's a good How? government. Yes, we are using oil money we to pay money. for free education. In Western Region, we have all the gold and timber and cocoa. We were not taking our children to school. It's 13,000. Now the number has increased to 27,000. It shows that we have always had a desire to go to school. But because we don't own the productive assets, you see, we are journalists. How many of your guys have decided to put their had earned money to buy cameras and had from a crew because some people they don't believe in only the productive assets yes but honorable to be frank is very expensive too and i don't think the support base here really support us well because these cameras this crew we are working with this camera there is not less than two thousand cities so you need about two of them and that's why every solid you get you keep you don't chop <laughs> so that when you get a two thousand you buy a camera and but what we buy for you see yes this concept like you have said mm -hmm. People always asking, asking, yes, asking. Yes. It's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you end one CD, you put 50% down before you chop the other 50. You don't chop 50 when mm -hmm. you are satisfied. Then you keep 50. You keep the 50 before you chop. So you, you don't eat beyond your cloth. Mm -hmm. Or you don't uh, cut your coat according to your mm -hmm. cloth, not according to your, your size. Mm -hmm. The fact that you're a big boy doesn't mean that every day you have to sit, sit in a big car and, and spend petrol. It means that once in a while you have to intentionally drive motorcycle or bicycle. I can buy seven, eight, three machines. So you should credit me the eight so that I can have ten workstations and one server. And the guy said, okay, I agree with you. Young man, the way you are brave, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. But on condition that you pay dollars, or fix all the amount in dollars, so if there's inflation, whatever, or CD exchange rate depreciation, it affects you, not me. I said, I agree. And I came, every month I was paying one machine. I was consistent. And I paid all. In fact, I paid before the time. I was a young man. I could have also decided to be spending the money mm -hmm. or somebody else's money. I wonder, but you had 2,100 then. Yes. Even now, some youth can't even afford 2,100 now. So, is there any loan facility? Is there any support system in the region that this is, let's center on the youth. This is the region where oil has been discovered, exploitation. Okay, let me show you something. I mean, let, let, let me give you some of the key. Mm -hmm. When I was at Tech, I was selling plane tickets for specialty travels in Accra. And I was keeping my commission. I was keeping my commission. You get me? I was keeping my commission. Some other people would have chopped all the commission mm -hmm. while they were on campus. But irrespective of that, I've also set up a small fund for the youth. Mm -hmm. So what we do is that when you're interested to do a project, uh, we'll support you to get you some loan to do the work. When you to make the tune of how much? Oh, it depends. Uh, sometimes we struggle between 6000 thousand and then we also do higher ones but the higher ones that one we have to be in charge of we have to work with you on the project so that you don't go so and how, how would one assess this oh, facility um, when you, you notify me we usually give it to i code to do mm -hmm. the training program mm -hmm. before they were advised that this person was serious in class mm -hmm. this person's pro uh, project is useful it can be supported this one is not good don't don't work on it then we communicate with them yes yeah, some of them they come with some big big figures which is just not sustainable but they themselves when you interview them <laughs> you realize that they, they don't add up so when they don't add up we advise them that this doesn't add up go and look for a new project and come and, and come do it so the life of the youth in the region you have all your children are in the youth bracket are you impressed with the general life of the youth because let's be let's narrow it down even to the entertainment sector the artists leave 
to Accra, they blew. A lot of the youth have now left for other um, jobs in Accra. And they are all working in places in Accra and they tell you, and you compare your life within that range where they've left, say, five years. You being here in the Western region, they go in. So the life of the youth, are, are you impressed about the general life of the youth? Um, I think that I had the opportunity of speaking to Kofi Kenata some time ago. And I told him that he's making a lot of money. He should reinvest it back here and make more money. He shouldn't spend the money. He shouldn't oversize his crew and stuff like that. I believe that there are a lot of opportunities in Takradi and the Western region. Plus, you are complaining that somebody's broke. Mm -hmm. Somebody's also becoming rich. Mm -hmm. So me, I don't complain. I believe that no matter where you are, you should brighten it up. Because my grandmother always says it's change, change, so so. Mm -hmm. You can never have it so so all the time. Once in a while, you might have the bumps. And therefore, inconsistency is constant, not the other way around. And therefore, I believe that the youth should come to one conclusion that nobody can live their lives for them. Mm -hmm. They have to live it. And no matter where they are, no matter where they are. Even when there's not enough revenue coming, where you oh. are? That's why you have to increase your streams of revenue. I mean, people in Ghana now know that we give a lot of scholarships. People will be in the university and behave as if they don't know that scholarship opportunities have come. So they don't write. When the date pass, then their mothers will be walking around all over the place looking for debt <laughs> to pay for their school. We have to write in the corner where we are. In this age of WhatsApp, mm -hmm. Facebook, and all that, you can't be giving those lame excuses maybe our parents gave. I mean, today, let me tell you my candid opinion. A girl cannot get pregnant, maybe at the university level, and say that was a mistake. If you do that, then you are telling, you are telling us that they are not teaching anything in the university. Mm -hmm. It's not fair even to our society. It's not fair. So, I believe that um, our, our young ones have a lot of opportunities and big future in our metropolis and then the western region because they should seize those opportunities so. and they should seize those opportunities mm -hmm. they should seize those opportunities they'll be successful yeah it's you'll be successful i don't see why we should make it look as if it's not possible it's possible people have made life here look at the yes. big big buildings mm -hmm. here they are built by young people they are not built by old men mm -hmm. in their time we can also do it in our time look when I was in STM, I was talking about this centenary thing. And you know the thing we chose? <clears throat> it's a big debate. And we settled on one thing. Turning the fortunes around in our time. That has been my guiding principle. So when you see that I'm doing all this market circle, this, 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 this. Yes, yeah, so the market circle project. Yes, it's coming on live. I mean, we have started building the relocation site. Mm -hmm. how, how much was the whole project cost? Um, currently, it's uh, 52 million euros. That's the it's whole a loan facility. Yes, a loan facility. From, um, from contractor. They, they are picking it from um, part of the money from Spain. Yeah, that's what they are doing. So how are you going to offload that loan? Are you going to... Is it There's a special like purpose vehicle that is being built mm -hmm. for the Assembly and the Ministry of Finance. And it's one of your legacy projects? Yes, please. Oh. Interesting. And one person you spoke about a lot was your grandmother. Yeah, I do. I and do she, all the time. She passed away some few months yeah. ago. Six months ago. Six eh? months ago. <laughs> but if you're just buried about few months ago. You have, you've authored this book, Lessons from My Grandmother, about opinion, Abena Ejewa. Yes, please. And 9.9 .9 lessons. Lessons. Why were they not 10? Um, she was uh, 99 years. Okay. And the last part, the last chapter, um, it's about socialization, so that was the point nine. <laughs> so, why, why was it forwarded by um, His Excellency John Ajekumbo? Yeah, because Did he know, uh, yes, know her personally? yes, he, okay. he, he, he knew her and she has used a lot of her facilities before. Okay. So, I asked that since that's a generation, uh, I should do as the harness of doing the so. What should I? What's the purpose of this book? If I read this book, what should I achieve from yeah, it? It's about lessons. Mm -hmm. Lessons in life that made her uh, very successful and very famous. Somebody I believe that uh, God used in adoring his glory. Um, 
if you look at it, usually we do funeral brochures. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, funeral brochures, they are like stories. We write them and then it's finished and then people throw them away. Yeah. So I was like, ah, this person is a whole institution. Yeah. What can we do so that other people can learn from her? And then I wanted the younger generations to learn, not the older ones. Mm -hmm. So the, even the writing style and then the, the uh, title mm -hmm. was something to attract the curious mind yeah. of younger people. It was written in plain language. The examples were simple. And then to look at some of the basic lessons we can all learn from yeah. and work with them. I mean, right. so we have 9.9 .9 lessons. And the first one talks about the power of small things. Small, yeah. And this is one thing that a lot of our young people don't appreciate. They think that Chrissy Crimson is a big name. So he's rich. So when I finish generally school school, day one, I should be Kofu Kumsin and big. But you have to know that you have to grow small, quietly, and then become big. And that, these are the things that we are talking about. Um, we give so many excuses for the little things that bombs our way. But we believe that in, if people believe that inconsistency is the constant, when the bombs come, you think true. I remember when I was in the university, anytime I had challenges in school, I asked myself that, if I can do so well in business at home, why can't you do, do so well also with, with my school stuff? So that encouraged me. So all that I'm saying is that we shouldn't look at all the bumps in life as the end of life. We should look at them as challenges and overcome them. And the more we overcome them, we become greater. Because if you can overcome one, it means that when you get to five, you can also overcome five to get to ten. So people should appreciate that inconsistency is constant. And then it is our persistence to succeed that will help us overcome these bumps that we face in life. And I believe that everybody is capable. Everybody is capable of being successful in Sekendita Kradi and the Western region. In fact, Western region contributes more than 50% to national GDP. So if people from Accra are coming to enjoy what we have, how can we give an excuse that there's nothing here that wants to go to Accra? I disagree. I personally disagree. Because the doors are too close. To they are not too close. If you persist, you succeed. If you persist, you succeed. My grandmother was a corn miller. And she made so much money. Me, I've always seen my grandmother as always rich. I've never seen her broke before. Mm -hmm. In fact, she will not even accept for you to tell uh, her that you are broke. You ask in the school now, okay, now on first any day. Yes. School now, one one go school, two school now, okay, no. I won't first any day. And see, I believe that that is the kind of thing that we have to be desirous of success. Mm -hmm. We have to. We have, don't cut corners. If you are consistent, you succeed. People work two or four jobs in America and be successful. Why can't they do the same thing in Ghana? Oh, yeah. Eh? Mm -hmm. There's one young lady I've always respected. She's called Mami. Mami something. Mami, Mami. I have to. Fredisha. Even when I was not an MP, she was organized in Accra. And still she's organized. She wants to be successful. So me, I, I believe that we are all capable of being successful. So young men and women in my constituency, in my district, in my region, I want to assure you, we are there to help you succeed. So try and try and try and try again to you succeed. This is a plea for me. We are capable of making Western Region what you want it to be. I mean, we are here to help you succeed. That's all. So think through with your ideas. Come up with some new projects. Let's help you. Look, 1D1F. Every day, everywhere I go, they ask, how many 1D1F? Is then I ask the general, how many 1D1F have you done? Because it's for the private sector. It's not government that's supposed to be building the factories. I want to support you in whatever difficulty you have along the way of building those factories to make you succeed. Because when Kwame Nkrumah built all the factories for us, even when he was alive, we collapsed this before the coup. And even though all those companies were looking good outside, their books were red and they had borrowed bank money to be paying their staff. They were just in red. So we cannot do this. We cannot do the same thing. Because what we do is we have all learned from the mistakes of Kwame Nkrumah. That's why we are doing this 1D1F led by the private sector. And a party that is pro-business, we will support you to succeed. That's what we are saying.
that's all that we are saying. So think big. Think, do all your thinking big. And do your proposal. One, two, page, three, page. Uh, and then let's support you to, to get them on stream. So if we have a proposal, we can bring you to the regional yes. business office. Yes. And so it's on record. And we'll yes. bring in a lot of these proposals. Yes. To Make sure your proposals are, are clean and neat mm -hmm. and simple. Yeah. Achievable. Simple. Yeah, achievable. And don't be afraid to join forces with your friends. Yeah. And people who can put in the money. Nobody, look. 0% zero percent of hundred mm -hmm. is zero. zero. Yeah. Five percent of two is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So don't be interested in owning everything. Mm -hmm. Be interested in owning the small part you can control. Mm -hmm. Let your friends and your family and other people put in the extra money mm -hmm. and make sure the project comes on stream. Do your monitoring uh, supervision very well. And your project sh should be fine. That's what we are talking about. I wish we could talk to you the whole day. Um, you have a lot to offer. You have a lot to share. A lot of insight. And I'm sure we'll come to you again after the elections. So 2020, after 7 December. I'm sure uh, because MPs know their faith right on that day. And if and only if you win. Are you, are you very confident of winning? I win. By which margin? Any percentage? Oh, last time we got 70. We want to increase it more than 70%. 70%? Mm. So this year... We increase it to. I've told you, we increase it more than the seventy. <laughs> you are very confident. Very, very confident. Because mm -hmm. when you serve your people well, mm -hmm. they you always they will always give you mm -hmm. another good term. Mm -hmm. So what what's the future of? Are you, are you a career politician? Where what does that mean? You want to be in politics till you retire. Or you just leave at a point? I want to be in politics so I've served my purpose. Okay. And mm -hmm. what's your purpose? To serve my people and make sure that... And you've not served them are... enough? Oh, I think After that... After 2009, um, I've, 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 I've said this, that this business of parliamentary, the more you are in the business, the more you get the network to improve the lives of your people. I believe that if I didn't get this term, I believe that all these seven major projects we brought into town mm -hmm. wouldn't have come. I believe so. So when I get the opportunity more, we have to use that to fix more of the problems that um, we have in the system. So the next administration, you would still want to be Western Regional Minister. You're looking at another ministry. Uh, that one is not for television. <laughs> All right. Honorable, um, <laughs> others think you have ambitions beyond MP. Yeah, people I've told be you, calling you. I've told you, you that story, you wrote it. <laughs> No, they think you'll be a fine material. You'll be a fine running mate material. Um, I don't think that this is for television. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. And um, 7 December is mm. when people, will, um, your electorate, the Takrady constituency will vote for you. You have the camera. Speak to them. Uh, Thank you very much, Takrady people. In 2008, I came to you to vote for me. You did. And I delivered. In 2012, I came to you again to vote for me. You did. And I delivered. In 2012, I came to you. You voted for me. And we have delivered. In fact, all the problems that have come up in those periods, like the new Takradi Road has been done, like the university you wanted in Takradi so badly has been done, the schools you wanted us to build has been done. And the humility wanted me to serve you. We have continued to do it up to today. Now we have another chance to vote for us again come December 7th. My plea with you is that continue to support us to win this election and massively so that the huge mandate you give us will be put to a good purpose. Our agenda now is to make sure that Security Takradi becomes the financial services center of the region and as an alternative to Accra by building on the MPP manifesto of making Security Takradi the back office for the oil and gas industry in the Western region. We believe that when we are able to bring in more finance, we'll be able to expand the factories, build new ones, build new businesses, so that opportunities for job would also increase. Mm -hmm. And I believe that with you, 
when you work hard at the opportunities that come your way, more younger people will also get opportunities to also do more for our constituency. Takrari constituency has improved. And I know that in the next two years, when all these major projects, the Takrari market cycle, the dual carriage from Takrari to Sekendi, the dual carriage from Takrari to Takwa, the interchange that want to build the first ever in the Western region, the tuna processing plant we want to do in New Takrari. When they all come together with the biggest youth center in New Takrady, when all these come together, it will give us more opportunities for jobs, more opportunities for businesses and profits that we can reinvest to enlarge our costs in Takrady and the second Takrady metropolitan area. So when you are voting on December 7th, all we are asking for is vote for number one on the ballot, where the elephant is. That is where you see Kobi Ochidakum Mensa and Nana Adosunye, Nana Nye Osunye, so that you give us four more years to continue. And then when we come back, you give us another four more years, another four more years as we deliver on our promises. And you know, we have delivered on to create an employment opportunity for you. It's the same government that will give you a hands up in terms of funding to start up your businesses and to expand your businesses. And therefore, I want you to join us with us this time round again and put the MPP back into power to do more for you and me. Thank you very much, and may God bless us all. So that was Honorable Kwabna Ochoidea Mensa, the Member of Parliament for Takrade and the Western Regional Minister. He is a serial entrepreneur and a politician and now an author. And where do we get copies of this? Oh, on the net. I think that you've set up uh, right. an online sales. All right. Net. So we'll, we'll give you links to where you could purchase the book, 9.9 .9 Lessons from My Grandmother, Oba Pinyin Abena Ejewa, The Wisdom of Her Light Still Unfolds. And the author is Corona Oshre Dakumensa. It's been wonderful having this interview. And like I said, we'll need to continue this interview some other time, probably after the elections. And special thank you to Chairman Basti for making sure this <laughs> came on. And we are so grateful for putting this together. And he's the CEO of Just Much Travel and Tours as well. And to my entire crew led by Ampaben and Wooly and everybody, we say thank you. <laughs>